Let's check back in now with Chief Meteorologist Dennis Phillips. During that package there with Adam, he was over in Hyde Park, and I'm sitting there trying to see what people are drinking, and Dennis is going, what are they watching? Yeah, they have the Weather Channel on. <laughs> Come on, dude. What are you talking about? Yeah, stay local. Stay local, right? And, and honestly, you know, when you look at what we're dealing with locally, the impacts for our area, very, very different for Central Florida compared to the Panhandle, compared to South Florida. I mean, Two days ago, I think the big concern was, and for our area, we certainly know why, because it's happened a lot, is this going to hook into our area? I mean, I think more often than not, people just figured it was a foregone conclusion that was going to happen. Never did. The models were all over this, and honestly, this is now so far offshore that the sustained hurricane winds are simply not going to happen. We're not going to see that. But what we will see, and we're beginning to right now, is these bands, and these are some of the stronger bands, not the most intense ones, the most intense ones are right there, but these bands are moving north because the storm is moving due north. So expect this pretty much from around I-75 west over the next hour or two, this area is gonna bring very heavy downpours, gusty winds, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, very often like what we have with our afternoon thunderstorms when we get a severe thunderstorm warning, and I suspect we're going to see a tornado watch issued shortly for the possibility because, I mean, think about this. This is a giant rotating thunderstorm. That's what it is. And by the way, look at how that eye wall is closing around right now. I mean, that's, it's just getting stronger. I, I, I really think this is going to go to 130 before landfall. I mean, there's really nothing in its way to cause it to slow down. So. I mean, I think the minimum is where we're at at 105, but I would not be surprised at all if this goes Cat 4 now at this point, and that's just the worst news for the Northern Gulf. But oh, we'll get to that in a minute. But regardless, again, we're looking at this rain that continues to work right on up towards Sarasota. I mean, it's just offshore. So if you live along the coast, you will see heavier rainfall with this band and probably with most of the bands, because at least until we finally see a turn more toward the northeast, and that'll start to swing some of these long extended moisture plumes right across the area. So we're gonna see it, but I still think the heaviest rain is gonna be west of I-75, where we need it the most, of course, because we're still in a drought. We'll see if we will be after this pushes on through. Some lightning, a lot of wind, and again, the potential for a couple of isolated water spouts to move on shore as a tornado, and I would think that that watch could be issued at almost any moment as we see right there some pretty intense weather ready to move into, move into Sarasota. And there is some lightning with that as well with this band as it comes on through. So there's the center, there's your eye, and you can see the eye wall and it is still moving due north. I mean, there's wobbles and that's a great shot there because watch how it looks like it goes a little bit to the right and then goes back to the left. And the untrained eye would look at this and say, oh no, that's gonna turn to the right, that's turning. No, these are wobbles, they're, they're not perfect circles. And as they rotate north, they kind of have that look. And unfortunately, that look is a much stronger hurricane. 105, that's the latest winds. Now, we're close enough now to landfall that recon continues to fly through this constantly. And there might be a time even outside of an advisory, which is every three hours, that they could bump this up. If recon comes in with a 115, they're not gonna wait till 11 o'clock. They're gonna say, we have a 115 major hurricane because it's 111 or above for a major Cat 3. Still moving due north at 16 miles an hour. Hurricane warnings for most areas along the coast, inland areas, they're tropical storm warnings. We've already been covered covering this for hours and hours that we are not going to see sustained hurricane winds in the Bay Area. It just can't happen. We're going to get gusts and pretty high gusts, 50, 60 miles an hour, but sustained, it, it, it can't happen. Hurricane force winds extend out 25 miles from the center. That's it. This thing's 130 miles from the center or from the coast, and it's never going to get any closer than 100 miles. So it just cannot happen. And again, anyone thinking this is going to turn, that's not going to happen either. So. Over the next couple of hours, we'll continue to watch this track carefully because our concern is a couple of things. One, the more north it goes, the more likely this goes into Tallahassee tomorrow at some point in time. Two, we're gonna start to see the water push through the overnight hours, but the high tide tomorrow between noon and four, that's the tide that I think we're gonna start to see a better chance of surge. So we're gonna have our reporters out in the field all night long, Jason and I will be here covering it tracking the storms, looking for the tornadoes, seeing the winds gusting. But I think it's gonna to be tomorrow at that second high tide, the one that's a 3.0 king tide. You've heard a lot about it. I'm sure the supermoon king tide tomorrow afternoon. 
That's the one that I think is going to give us more of our significant concerns for surge across the area. There's the updated track. I throw this out here because some of the models were doing that. I mean, look at this big old bend at the end. Uh, no one's really talking much about it with good reason, but the GFS actually took this and did a complete loop as a much weaker system, but did a complete loop and brought it right back into the Gulf again. Uh, we'll worry about that if it ever happens. But <laughs> again, taking a closer look right now, there's the track, 2 a.m., about its closest approach to the Bay Area. And then as a Category 3 hurricane, 12 hours later at 2 p.m., it's already going to be in Georgia. So, I mean, that's how fast it's going to be moving, which makes landfall here around 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. Of course, our concern is if that track moves more to the west, and the Hurricane Center said that could happen at 11, and as long as this is moving north, I suspect that track will continue to move off to the west. And so that's something that we really, really need to keep a close eye on. So look how small the hurricane force winds are. See that? Those are the orange right there, 58 to 73. Those are the stronger winds. The yellow winds are where we're in right now. So we're seeing these winds along the coast. But as this moves north, those hurricane winds never get really any closer to the Bay Area. But the winds that we are dealing with and the surge, let's go over to Jason to talk about that. Jason. And Dennis, while you were just talking, you ready to send it over to me. A tornado watch has been issued. Let me see if that's already been loaded graphically. It has. There so there you go. Everybody in our area, that includes our inland spots. We were wondering if it would be that far east. It goes right to the border here of uh, Polk and Highlands County. There, are not as, there is not a tornado watch over to the eastern side of the peninsula. So that tornado watch means that we are going to expect to see a couple of isolated tornadoes. We see this nearly with every tropical system, whether it's a depression or a tropical low or a strong hurricane like this one. Like Dennis said, it's a spinning thunderstorm and we have all these individual spins that happen. Plus you have land interaction, friction, and all that sets the stage for us to potentially see some of these supercells offshore that may turn on shore and develop into uh, something a little stronger. So I'm going to spend just a second on here with the radar, see if we've got any suspicious areas that are showing up. Of course, the squall line or the squall that we're talking about coming on shore, it's literally within 15 miles of the coast right now and it's within these areas that we'll watch for the potential for some rotation to develop. So if we were to see tornado warnings begin to get issued, it would be here in our southern counties first, south of Tampa Bay. I'm going to flip the radar off. I'm going to turn the rain off and we're going to look at the winds inside of this. So it looks a little funky and yeah, there are a couple of areas of suspicion that I am seeing. So let me pause it. We'll zoom in onto these spots here. What we look for is a difference in color on the radar. And what that means for you and me is that when you see two colors that are the kind of the same color, but not necessarily. We've got this spot here and and then maybe a few spots under the radar down here as well. But this is a little bit of spin. So we've got the blue going this way, the red, green going this way. These two right next to each other indicate that we do have some rotation out there within these cells that are offshore. So that's a potential heading into the next few hours, hence the tornado watch until all the way tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. So right now, no tornado warnings, but just be advised that we may be doing a little bit of tornado coverage here as we go through the night if some of these can hold together and move a bit farther south. But like Dennis said, we've got to talk about the surge. The surge is going to be the biggest forecast uh, headache for us here over the next couple of hours and I say that because we're looking at the onshore winds that are coinciding with high tide times and that all working together to give us the surge potential. But it's all about the wind direction first. So take a look at this. This is Futurecast in the Gulf of Mexico right now with the eye being just to the west of Port Charlotte right now in southern Sarasota County. That means that our winds are just now beginning to turn onshore here to the south of the eye. To the north of the eye, where we're looking at the peak forecast for surge potential, we're still looking at winds around the eye coming and out of the east. That's an offshore wind, and that is right now limiting the surge risk. As we go forward in time, though, as the eye begins to move north of your latitude, that's when your winds shift back on shore and back out of the southwest. So by 1 a.m., as we're gearing up for high tide, some of you around midnight, others as late as 3 to 4 in the morning, just depends on your location from north to south, and I'll have those tide times here in a second. But by 1 a.m., the center is now basically at the latitude here of Clearwater, and that means that we're beginning to see the onshore winds coming into Tampa Bay. The surge has already started in our southern spots, maybe as early as 9 to 10 o'clock. The water is starting to creep up here in southern Sarasota County, where you do have the potential for 2 to 4, maybe 5 foot of surge in these areas and in Tampa that's what we're going to start to watch and see how much water can get pushed into the bay because in Tampa area we're looking at that tide time high tide being around 2 33 o'clock and that's when we're looking at the center beginning to bring in some of those stronger areas of winds and, and more of a water push then you fast forward to 4 a.m. the eye the latitude has now reached Citrus County so we're seeing all of our coast at that point beginning to get the water pushed on shore and beginning to fill the bays and estuaries and also pushing into some of the freshwater rivers that go out into 
into the bays and that's all setting up the potential for us to get these near record level surges that we have not seen along our coast in quite some time. The last several strong, powerful hurricane systems have moved inland before they got to our latitude, which kept offshore winds nearly for the entire coast the whole time. Even in Hurricane Ian, Ian moved onshore just south of Sarasota County. So while we had the eye wall in southern Sarasota County, the whole time it was moving with winds offshore. So we had the significant and severe wind damage in Northport and then of course the freshwater flooding that happened after. But in places like Inglewood, Minnesota Key, Casey Key, Nokomis, we didn't see that significant surge in these areas because of the offshore wind. So that's what was different with this storm compared to last year, compared to Irma, compared to Charlie. So often the storms have moved in to the uh, southern peninsula and then have come up, which have kept us on the offshore side, uh, the off wind side, I should say, of our surge. So let me find the surge tide map. This is what we're looking at. So in Crystal River, around three o'clock, the eye should be approaching your latitude and we're looking at 302 into the morning for high tide. So if we can hold off the eye going past Crystal River, by 3 a.m. as the tide is at its highest, we may save a little bit on this first high tide of that flood surge potential. But the next high tide, like Dennis was saying, is at 247. The storm will be well away from the area, but we're still looking at, of course, the onshore wind around the circulation with it being to our north. In St. Petersburg, 331 in the morning is our high tide. We're already going to start to see the onshore wind here by midnight. So this is where we could actually run into high tide coinciding with the onshore winds in our central and southern spots. In Sarasota, to 153 a.m. By that point, places like uh, St. Armand Circle, Lido Key, Siesta Key, you're beginning to get the surge pushed back onto your beaches at that point as well. So 302 is what we're looking at here in the Tampa St. Pete area, and that's what we're going to be talking significantly here, Dennis, about the surge potential. So I'll send it back over to you. Yeah, Jason, so a couple of things I want to go over, kind of um, administrative things, if you will. All right, so first of all, I want to welcome the folks who are watching us from Florida 24. Uh, especially in the West Palm area, because we are now kind of covering the entire state in our coverage, and with good reason, because the entire state is being impacted by...